I'm editing the video and I've noticed that my lips are purple. <laughs> um, right now I've put lip balm on top to try to hide the purple and I haven't really succeeded. The reason they're purple is because I've been having wild blueberries. If I'd been having regular blueberries, they wouldn't be purple. Wild blueberries have four times as much anthocyanin in them. This is not a sponsored um, video, so I'm not getting paid to do this. <laughs> I highly recommend this product and I'm gonna talk more about it at the end. Jonah Hill's ex, Sarah Brady, has shown Jonah Hill's text to the world. Jonah Hill is an actor who starred in Don't Look Up. Sarah Brady is a semi-professional surfer and law student. So here is his list of demands. He says, if you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, this is obviously in his mind what he decides is inappropriate and boundaryless, uh, to model, wow, so she's not even allowed to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, again, she's a surfer, I mean, even if she wasn't a surfer, that would be completely unreasonable, but the fact that this is what she does the most of is be in the water in a swimsuit, the, you know, it's a, it's a joke that she can't post those pictures, to post sexual pictures and, and again like well what does he think is sexual because when i look at her current instagram page i would say that almost none of those pictures are sexual and this is when she's not with him and she's putting up what she wants to put up a picture that i would call sexual would be one where the person who's posing is intending to turn on whoever's looking at it and that's not the impression i get from the majority of those pictures and possibly any of them. Friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. So even her friendships are being judged now. He's so jealous, it seems to me, that he can't even tolerate her being friends with certain women. He feels threatened very easily, it seems, this guy. So again, he's taking that problem out on her. He's expecting her to solve his problems. And if she doesn't, he'll just leave. Was Sarah Brady right to share those text messages with the world? We can all screw up. And, uh, and, and that's what happens in our private lives. You know, I think everybody has at some point. So would you want that to come out and for everyone to be talking about it? There are things that people are saying that I very much don't agree with and they're so unhelpful that they then get me to think again, God, if, if his texts weren't exposed, then these people wouldn't be putting out all of this misinformation. <laughs> but then again, you know, when you have a conversation about something, there are going to be obviously different viewpoints and misinformation will be spread. So it just depends on who the viewers decide to trust. Here's an example of someone who I think has got it very wrong. I don't understand how these text exchanges of him, sure, being a little controlling, maybe a lot controlling, maybe odd, how this now turns in him as a misogynistic, abusive man. He's laying it on the line, right? So at the end of the day, he's turning around and saying, look, this is what I want from a relationship. This is what I would expect from you. Do you want to proceed or not? This is kind of like the message I'm seeing here. She yeah, obviously well decided to proceed. So at the end of the day, she also then has to take responsibility of what happened beyond that. Jonah Hill doesn't have the right to list what he doesn't like in that context with the intention of getting his girlfriend to change her behavior and with the threat that otherwise he'll leave her. So I don't know what would be a better example of coercive control than that. For some people that can be, uh, it can be very hard to, uh, you know, to let them leave because you can think, well, they're so sure of themselves and they're so sure it's my problem and so they seem very confident that they can find someone else who is going to be okay with all of this. So maybe it is about me. And I wonder if Sarah Brady might have felt like that. She does talk about how the relationship affected her confidence. So it kind of seems that she probably did feel like that. 
And also, why would she be entertaining all of his suggestions if she didn't? And then he says, so if you need all of these things, then he says, I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. Well, these things obviously do bring her to a place of happiness because she's happily doing them. She hasn't said to him, these things are making me unhappy. I really want to stop doing them now. So from that, he can assume that she's doing them because they bring her happiness. And acting like he has no idea if that's the case is just manipulative. These are my boundaries for romantic partnership. This is not a way to set boundaries with someone and it's really not acceptable. I remember having a client who thought that it was okay to tell his girlfriend that she shouldn't be out beyond a certain time of night. They weren't living together. They were living in separate places. They didn't have kids together. So it wasn't anything like she's gonna to be too tired to take the kids to school the next day. It was because he didn't trust her and he didn't trust her because she was friendly to men even though he said that she didn't flirt with men. That was just enough to not trust her. So he would expect her to be texting him, not just to say, oh, I'm going home now or something, you know, for her safety, but he'd expect her to be texting him regularly while she's out, while she's trying to talk to other people that she was out with. And, and, it, and it was amazing how he actually believed he was being abused by her because she wasn't sticking by every single rule. And, and he actually shared his texts with her in order to try to get me to, I guess, agree that she was being abusive, when actually what I saw in those texts was coercive control coming from him. He was, uh, and they were very similar to these texts, except perhaps a bit more extreme. But it was the same thing where he was saying that he wasn't going to be able to put up with it if she wasn't under his control in various ways, with the threat that he'll leave her. And he thought that that was fine because he wasn't making her do these things in his mind. You know, he she was free to be with someone else who would be okay with them. So... <laughs> But I mean, to me, it's very obvious that that is coercive control because the person has something to lose. They're being told that the love is very conditional. The person's only going to stick around if you are under their control in these various ways. Otherwise, they're out of your life. It actually is illegal to use coercive control in a relationship. That is illegal in the UK. Now, this happened in the US. It's legal there. But, um, but it's not legal in the UK. So if this was happening in the UK, I think you could say, well, this person has broken the law and he's famous, you should all know about it. And then I guess there'd be the question mark, you know, because even with breaking the law, you can drive too fast by mistake, you know, you can get a speeding ticket, you can park in the wrong place, you know, all that kind of thing can happen. And does that mean the world should all know about it? I think that it all comes down to whether it's gonna benefit the public enough to justify it. And in this case, I think that it could, you know, even though I'm still filled with this really kind of unpleasant feeling about, uh, you know, him being shown up in public like this, I do actually think that this, in, this could, just having this conversation could benefit the public. Uh, because this is something that so many people have opinions about, it means, I think, that a lot of people relate to what's going on here. You know, whether they relate to Sarah Brady's position or Jonah Hill's position, uh, it, it means that they can start thinking about their behaviour and, and decide what is okay and what isn't okay in, in terms of how they behave and how other people behave towards them. I think it's a little aggressive and controlling, but I do think the way he went about it was pretty fair. When I see this written, sure, controlling, but respectfully controlling. <laughs> sure, you want to go do that? He even says, if that's what you want to do, uh, then I support you. No hard feelings. If that brings you happiness, that's my boundaries for a romantic partnership. It's weird. It's like, this is not my business. This isn't abusive to me. So he says he supports it and there will be no hard feelings, but that he's also off. 
So he's gonna leave her. So how does he support it then if he's gonna leave her? That is not having a boundary. That is giving an order, a command. It's saying, change all of these things or I'm gonna leave you. I, I don't think it's gonna benefit the public to know about this unless there's something very specific they can actually learn from it. Now I wanna look at a video a psychologist and his wife made about these texts because there are some things that they say that really miss the mark, I think, you know, and, um, and there's something the psychologist himself says that concerns me and feels disturbing and quite surreal. And he's like, I respect the fact that you're beautiful and that you're hot and you wanna show your body off, but I don't like it because I'm insecure, mm -hmm. which is what he said in the text message. Is that a fair position to have? I mean, I think he's just being honest about it. I agree. Like, I don't think, I don't, I don't, everybody, I feel like a lot of people are looking at it and being like, well, that's an unreasonable request from him to say to his girlfriend, hey, take the, you know. Well, I Bikini agree it's unreasonable for him to request that. Yes. But I but I think he is acknowledging his feelings about it and like we can't not allow people to have feelings yeah. about stuff. I agree with you 100%. The only context in which it's okay for him to make a list like that is one in which he says, look, darling, here are all of my issues. I struggle with you doing this. I struggle with you doing this and this and this. And so therefore... I need to get out of this relationship. I'm not ready to commit to a woman. I can't give her um, what everyone deserves. I need to take myself away. I need to get some help and I need to work on these issues in myself. That is the only context in which it's okay for him to list all of this stuff. It's controlling because, um, like, number one, that's how he met her. So, like, she already had those on the Internet all those pictures were previous prior to his relationship with her. It doesn't matter when she had the swimwear pictures up. It's not about um, the fact that she used to have them up and now he's saying don't have them up anymore. It's about the fact that he's trying to control her behavior when she's not hurting anyone. If he is getting hurt, that's not because she is hurting him. It's because of his own issues. And this psychologist unfortunately appears to have the same issues because he's told his wife that it wouldn't be okay for her to dress as she had dressed when they first met. The way that you dressed when I met you, or you and I would have some, some discussions if you, if, you, if you wore the same outfits David, today. the same outfits David, today. you constantly okay, this is, complain that I haven't changed my style since you met me. So This I is disturbing coming from a psychologist. I still dress the same. You had the girls out a lot more than they are today. That's I don't think it's a fair statement. Everybody's upset with him because they're like, oh, well, that's, that's how she, she put that, she had those pictures up when you started dating her and now you don't want them up. And he's thinking, yeah, I saw those pictures and I pursued her because she looks super hot. And now I'm feeling insecure. I want her to be committed to me. And it feels like she's not being committed because I know what I thought when I saw those pictures. I know what all these other people are thinking when they see those pictures. Like, wh why is that unreasonable? Wh why does it matter if she had him up before? He thinks it's reasonable. If she showed too much cleavage, then that wouldn't be okay with him. So he's decided <laughs> that it's his right to decide how she can dress, you know? That's not anyone's right. And it, and it doesn't matter if you're male or if you're female, the other, you know, the person you're with is allowed to dress however they want to dress. And if you don't like it, then that is your problem. They're not your toddler who you can dress. You know, there's someone who has their own mind. And if they're comfortable with showing their cleavage, then that's what they're comfortable with. And now I'm feeling insecure. I want her to be committed to me. And it feels like she's not being committed because I know what I thought when I saw those pictures. I know what all these other people are thinking. He's saying that, um, that now I want to see commitment from you. That, that's how he's just put it. As if, well, if you show your cleavage, you're not committed to me. That is complete rubbish. <laughs> That's like saying, well, if you show your cleavage, it means that 
you are, uh, you know, you're, you're basically single and you're, you want to pursue things with other people. That is again about jealousy. That's about someone being very insecure and needing to get help with that. But again, I mean, she's not showing so much cleavage now. I really hope that's just because that's what she's comfortable with regardless of his views. I hope that she hasn't unconsciously been molded to wear whatever he wants her to wear. And now I'm feeling insecure. I want her to be committed to me. And it feels like she's not being committed because I know what I thought when I saw those pictures. I know what all these other people are thinking. Well, I wonder if like maybe instead of saying, if you want to be in a relationship with me, then you'll take him down. If he could change it and then like, I'm kind of uncomfortable with those pictures up there. Yeah. Like, how would you feel about not having them up there anymore? Yeah. No, she is completely missing the point. That would also not be okay at all. <laughs> Change your behavior, please. She's just saying it in a more polite way. And here's my issue. Please, could you sort it out for me? It's still not okay to ask somebody to do that for you. And, and that goes for everything. I mean, this is particularly damaging because this is about, you know, uh, this is a big part of her life surfing. She's got heaps of photos up. And so it's a really big change for her. But even if it was a small change, you know, even if it was somebody who, um, they, they, they have to make sure that every light switch is switched off and on three times, otherwise there's gonna be bad luck in that room, you know. Uh, that, that doesn't mean that the partner has to also do that so that they're not anxious. Even if it's very easy for them to quickly do that, that is, it, it's the same principle, you know. If you have something that you're struggling with, you are a separate person and you need to go and get help you need to put in the work, you need to get help from someone who's also going to put in some work and get it resolved. But it's got nothing to do with the person you're with. And if you believe that that is part of their job as your partner to um, help you with your issues and uh, by adjusting their behaviour, it's not uh, reasonable to ask somebody to do that for you. And it's not healthy for either of you. It means that they end up enabling your behaviour. You never get to challenge yourself and change the things that get in your way. And, and, and it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Relationships should be about supporting each other to grow. It's not about supporting each other to shrink. And what happens in the end is you both become less together than each of you could be on your own. I think we probably see this the same way, which I think it's a reasonable thing and even a healthy thing to be able to say to your spouse or your mm -hmm. partner, hey, what you're doing is making me feel insecure, even though it's a ludicrous position to take. I know what I'm thinking is unreasonable, but this is how I feel. You should be able to say that. That only makes sense if you add that the other person shouldn't accommodate them. And if she says, oh, no, that's OK, I, I can change all of that, then it's not right for him to be OK with that. It's not right for him to accept that in her. I think it's interesting how he says, sort of done with explaining myself, after he set her these various rules that she would have to stick by for him to be OK with her. Um, so he is feeling like he's having to explain himself. You know, and it makes me laugh because a lot of abusive people are completely oblivious to the fact they're actually being abusive and they feel like victims themselves. And this is a great example of that. What, what's just happened here is he's told her to remove videos of herself in a swimsuit. Now, being that she is a semi-professional surfer, her Instagram is full of her in a swimsuit, usually on a surfboard. So, um, you know, it just seems really unreasonable that this is not okay. So three of them have been removed, not the video yet. It's my best surfing video, she says. Would you feel better if the cover frame was different? Any more specific ones that bother you? So this is quite scary because at this point in the relationship, she is doing whatever he's asking of her and she's prepared to remove 
this surfing video if she really has to. So this is going too far. She should not have to ask him if her video is okay by him because this is his, his insecurity we're talking about. This is his issue, you know, if he doesn't like the idea of other men looking at her in a swimsuit, then that's something he needs to work on if he wants to be a happy person and if he wants to be with her. He either needs to go and get help and um, talk to a therapist about this stuff or he needs to leave her without explaining that if she changed her ways, he would stay with her. He needs to leave her. He needs to say something like, uh, I need to sort myself out before I can be in a relationship. And then, you know, I'll get in, I'll get back in touch if I ever get to that point. And you'll probably be with someone, but, you know, understandably, but I just hope you, you know, who knows if, you, if you're single one day in the future, maybe we can get back together. But I'm very sorry to let you down. You know, I've just got this massive issue. <laughs> You know, and, and it's fine. That's totally fine. I think that would be a very respectable thing for him to have said, because we all have issues of some kind, you know, and um, so that, that I don't judge it. If someone has an issue with jealousy, then that's, that happens to be what they struggle with, just like everybody struggles with something. So, um, but the, the question is, what do they do with that issue? Do they feel that it's their responsibility to sort it out and to get help and do their best to overcome it? Or do they feel like it's someone else's responsibility to manage their issue for them? Somebody who isn't getting paid to help them, you know, a girlfriend, for example, like in this case, you know, that is completely inappropriate. So then he says, yes, one that isn't of your ass in a thong, or I should say ass in Amer American speak. Um, then she replies, not a thong, but K. Okay. So um, he can't handle you know, a particular kind of bikini bottom or, or swimsuit bottom. And then he says, I'm done. There's tons. I'm just going back the past month. You want to argue and I don't. So, <laughs> so in his mind, unless he's being very manipulative here, um, you know, intentionally, it seems that in his mind, he actually thinks that her not immediately agreeing means that she's argumentative and that she is creating arguments by challenging him on his um, extreme judgment of these pictures. So she said, you're done, what does that mean? And he said, I'm just over explaining myself. So, see, so at this point, they, they must have had a discussion about uh, you know, whether it's okay that she removes all of these things and, and why these images and videos were there in the first place and what it's about for her, her love of surfing and so on. But he's not interested in listening to any of that because none of that matters to him, you know, because he doesn't see this as something he needs to resolve in himself. He thinks this is her problem. He doesn't like it and say so it's her problem. She's going to have to like it or lump it. She's going to have to take all of this stuff down or he's off you know, and he doesn't, he's not interested in discussing it. So that shows how uh, conditional his love and support of her is. It's very one-sided, you know, and, and for somebody in her position, what I'd recommend is once you realise the other person is not prepared to take responsibility for their issues, and they're not prepared to um, listen to your side, and to how they their issues might be affecting you. You know, if it's very one-sided in that way, then just don't give the conversation time anymore. Because what's happening here is she's actually losing her power more and more as he gains his, because he's turning around and saying, well, you're just causing arguments. And so not only will he not listen to her, but he's also judging her and, 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 and really accusing her of doing something to um, create problems in the relationship, which of course is very ironic because that's exactly what he's doing. So in order to avoid being labeled in that way, it's good to just let go 
of trying anymore. Notice how much energy is that person putting in? How much energy am I putting in? Okay, there's something wrong here. <laughs> and he's not taking responsibility. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm not gonna try and reason with that person because the more energy I put into this situation, the more power I'm gonna lose. And, and also that can lead to confusion. You know, it's easy for us to see this from a distance, but for her caught up in this situation, uh, it, it, I can imagine that she could end up thinking that it doesn't make sense, that there's something he's not understanding because he's thinking that she's doing something that she isn't doing. And so she has to somehow try to get to the bottom of it by explaining herself or by continuing to try to communicate with him. And so that means she gets more and more invested in the situation. She again loses more and more energy and she gets more and more confused. The more invested you get, the more likely you are to be confused because the more emotionally you're gonna be thinking. And that's just natural, you know, if you give a lot of energy to something, you're gonna become emotionally involved with it. There are some changes you can make if it's not to help somebody to escape their problems. So for example, if you're a blunt person, you could um, try to learn how to say things in a more gentle way. That's something that could be helpful to the person at the other end. It could get you both a better result from that conversation. So there are things to do with communication that you can change, you know, just if it's about communicating something more clearly to the other person so that they understand better what your intention is, so that you avoid misunderstandings. That's something that you can work on, both of you together, and it's a very important part of any kind of relationship you have with anyone. You know, communication is the most important thing. Once you start changing yourself to accommodate someone else's insecurities, the relationship becomes codependent. It becomes messy. You lose yourself and you lose respect for yourself and the other person loses respect for you. Not only that, but they can end up losing respect for themselves and you can end up losing respect for them because they're not managing their own problems themselves. You know, so it gets messier and messier. Thank you so much for giving me video suggestions last time. I'm so glad I asked because it's been really helpful. I've had so many and I hope you carry on doing that. Please do, even if I don't make the video you asked for this time, please keep asking because I'm sure that one of these days, you know, you'll suggest something that will be so helpful to me that, um, you know, that I wouldn't have thought of had you not suggested it. I might not know as well, that's the other thing. I don't always know what exactly is going on in America, for example. <laughs> um, um, one thing that does help is if it's something that's going on right now. Those are videos I tend to be drawn to the most because I know that they're gonna get views. And um, while I don't have time to put out loads of videos, I kind of have to put out the ones that get more views. But I have wild blueberry powder and organic blackcurrant powder every day. Um, I have it in a smoothie or in yogurt and it's delicious and it's super healthy. I've done it ever since getting long COVID. And for cyanin, that is a really great nutrient. You know, it's really, really good for you. So I hope that was helpful. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.